So today we are stepping into the season of Advent and beginning a new worship series from a sanctified art called How Does a Weary World Rejoice? The word Advent comes from the Latin root meaning to come, and it is the four-week period before Christmas when we prepare for Christ to come, when we prepare to celebrate a strange and miraculous birth that took place 2,000 years ago, but also when we prepare for Christ to come again you can mark your calendars now for our Christmas Eve service on Sunday, December 24th at 7 p.m., but no one but God knows when Jesus will return. Advent means that it isn't Christmas yet. We wait and prepare and light candles to light the way, but it isn't Christmas yet. The world waited many, many long years for the first Christmas. We can wait a few more weeks. Advent means that we remember why the world needed the first Christmas to happen at all. This world that we live in is not always peaceful or joyful or kind. But Jesus was born into this world because the world is not always peaceful or joyful or kind. He came to guide us because we were lost. He came to welcome us because we felt like we would never belong. He came to love us because we lived in despair. For Christmas, to remember the gift of the birth of God's only Son, we have to remember why it is that this broken and weary world needed a Savior in the first place, and why it needs a Savior still. It could be so easy to fall into despair looking at the world. It takes courage to hope. It takes courage to prepare the way for the Lord who will come. It takes courage to be the one who shows kindness to others to be patient, to keep an eye out for those who are weary. Throughout our worship series this season, we will ask ourselves this question, how does a weary world rejoice? This week, we consider how we might rejoice by first acknowledging our weariness. We acknowledge our weariness not to overwhelm ourselves with despair, but to look around us and find the places where we can offer help we look through the fog of weariness to find what we can change. We choose to find the cracks of light to come through. Despair and weariness will not be the end of God's story. I like that the question isn't, how does a weary world drop all of its burdens? Or, how does a weary world fix the problem? Or, how does a weary world forget its weariness? No, we acknowledge our weariness, and then we look for ways to rejoice anyway, no matter how small that rejoicing might be. We rejoice because we know that change is possible. And as I was reflecting on our theme this week, my mind brought me back to one of my favorite Charlie Chaplin lines. Despair is a narcotic. It lulls the mind. We will not be indifferent. We won't look away when other people are hurting. We won't pretend that wars aren't happening. We won't harden our hearts and live as if nothing matters. We will not be indifferent because we care and we hope. And we will find ways to work together. And somehow, in this Advent season and throughout our whole lives long, we will prepare the way for Christ's birth and for Christ's return. Our second scripture reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 23. Today's story takes place before the angel comes to Mary, before Jesus is ever laid in a manger. Today the angel comes to Zechariah as he begins to prepare the way for Christ to come. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children, because Elizabeth was barren, and both were getting on in years. 
Once, when Zechariah was serving as priest before God, he entered the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to Zechariah an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink, even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak, until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondered at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he could not speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them, but remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he went to his home. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As Advent begins, we start by acknowledging the weariness, grief, rage, and hopelessness we carry. But we also affirm that we are made for joy. Joy is designed to live in a full house of other emotions. We start the season with Zechariah and Elizabeth. They have battled infertility and have lived many years steadfast in their faith. Perhaps they feel the weight of hopes and dreams unattained. The angel comes to Zechariah with a promise of good news, but Zechariah can't fully receive it, and he is cast into silence for the duration of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Sometimes weariness can harden us and prevent us from living fully. We've had hard journeys. Grief has left a scar on us. This is how we show up to Advent. Let us acknowledge the ways that we, too, are hardened by disbelief. Like the psalmist, let us ask how long and plead for restoration. We look for answers and explanations. We don't always find them, or don't always understand them, even if we find them. When we don't understand, we might remember the angel's words to Zechariah. No, no, shh, stop talking. Take a breath, listen harder, take a breath. Let yourself dream of new possibilities, no matter how unobtainable they might feel right now. Take a breath, listen harder, really listen. Listen for the voices you don't hear every day. Look for the new things that God is doing around you. Take a breath, listen harder. And like the angel, I'd like to invite you to take a breath, too, and breathe in today's gospel story, and breathe in the hope that we cling to, and breathe in the spirit of Advent, waiting and preparing for Christ to come to us. I invite you to look at the art printed on the front cover of your bulletin or appearing now on screen, like magic. It is a piece by Lauren Wright Pittman, one of the creative minds behind a sanctified art which provided the foundation for our worship series this season, How Does a Weary World Rejoice? I invite you to look at her painting, Annunciation to Zechariah, as I read the artist's reflection on creating it. She writes, Zechariah is dressed in a breastpiece, ephod, rome, checkered tunic, turban, and sash, 
just as the book of Exodus specifies. In my painting, gold, blue, purple, and crimson yarns are woven together and bejeweled with engraved stones which bear the names of the sons of Israel. Zechariah stands in the holy place, wearing the most meticulous of garments. Does he expect to encounter the divine? Or is he just going through the motions, lighting the incense as an all too familiar scent fills the air? After all these years of fulfilling priestly duties and living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord, Zechariah and his wife are still childless. Regardless of their desire for children and their culture and context, childlessness bore the implication of God's contempt. I ruminated on this image, a weary priest wrapped in layered fabrics, colors, symbols, textures, and rare stones that proclaim God's providence and power. The contrast is not lost on me. I often try to neglect my weariness by putting on a veneer of unwavering trust in God, while feeling like I may suddenly unravel into a pile of beautifully curated threads, stories, and gold accessories. In this image, I decided to depict the angel as smoke from the altar of incense. Zechariah has one hand over his mouth in fear and disbelief, while his other hand cradles the notion, not yet hope, of his son's existence. Do you bind up your weariness in a neat and tidy bow, put your head down and project okayness like I do? What would it look like to acknowledge our weariness, quit powering through, and open ourselves up to what God might have in store for us. Perhaps we'll meet an angel. Let us pray. May we look for angels in this weary world, and for hope, and for a reason to rejoice. May we not despair. Christ is coming, and change is possible. May we feel the sun coming through even the darkest night. In this Advent season, may we hope and wait and prepare for your glory.